I'm meteorologist Carly Gomez with your latest update on the fire weather concerns here in California. We are dealing with a red flag warning in effect from Redding down toward the Sacramento area. Now the Watt National Weather Service does have this wide area marked, although their bigger concern is the western side of the valley. Although they are saying the Sacramento and Placer County areas are not included, included here, there is a bit of a mix up here with the actual National Weather Service uh, delivering this graphic out. And they're saying that the winds are going to be coming in at about 15 to 25 miles per hour. The gusts as high as 30 to 35 miles per hour with very low humidity overnight, 8 to 20 percent. Now, we are seeing the fire weather warning as opposed to seeing really just a normal evening because we're dealing with winds coming in out of the north. Northerly winds over land keeping us very dry. We typically get them off the ocean, which brings us that kind of more moist air, that ocean air that comes in, although breezy, this is now dropping our humidity levels. Now, this may be a little hard for some to see, but take a look here. This stretch is that western side of the valley we were talking about. You notice Yuba City out of there, as well as Sacramento and Placer, although the National Weather Service graphic does include it as a fire weather warning. They're saying this is the primary area of concern for them as this is where winds will be funneling in and we will be dealing here with some potential for fire danger. Let's take a look at the elements here that is included. Wind, of course, number one, that's going to push any fire that starts moving it quickly. We are dealing with unstable weather conditions bringing about the stronger winds, but the temperatures are also high. We'll see the highest and the hottest day of the week, I should say, for your Wednesday. That'll be in the upper 90s, 98 to 100 degrees. But relative humidity is going to be drop, dropping, as mentioned, 8 to 20 percent overnight is our relative humidity. And that's really going to be some of the driest bone dry conditions you can deal with out there in terms of fuels. Fuels, that is grass, brush out there that has had all summer to dry out. And that'll be the fuel for those fires. Now, terrain is another aspect we also look at when things start burning in areas where the topography is very steep. We can see fast moving flames. That does include that area there near the coastal range spot, so we're seeing the biggest area of concern. Now, as we take a look, as mentioned, the biggest area right around here from Vacaville, Fairfield, up through areas of the coastal range and the western side of the valley all the way up toward Redding. The current humidity levels actually have been getting better in the overnight, at least for the Sacramento area, which is why this is still mentioned but left out of the area of concern. And we are seeing about 35 percent and 30 percent for Placerville and Roseville, but still very dry for the north in that white zone there as they are dealing with uh, pretty dry conditions, which if again, if anything sparks or takes off, that could move quickly, especially as the overnight hours are dealing with some of the strongest wind pickups in exactly that zone. This is where we're seeing about 35 mile per hour wind gusts right around there and around Lake Berryessa here. And we are seeing most of the valley spots remaining around 5 to 10 miles per hour, which also seeing much slower conditions for those foothill spots. Some good news there because we know the topography is very steep in these zones. So seeing it at least with lighter winds is at least something to look forward to, but still keeping our eye there on those coastal range spots. Moving toward Thursday, things start to flare right back up. We will see that red flag warning expire, but in exchange, we're getting cooler temperatures arriving for this transition day. Thursday, transitioning from mid-90s into Friday's mid-70s. A huge drop, all due to a low pressure system. Just here offshore, you see the winds kind of pulling right in and pushing all that air from the southwest up and over the Sierra Crest over to Nevada. Some of the strongest wind gusts there could be as high as about 45 miles per hour and even into the Yosemite area. If you have plans for Labor Day weekend, keep in mind those strong winds will be pushing through, but there's also potential chance to even see some scattered showers moving its way over northern California, mostly for the Sierra spots and way further north as there may be a system approaching, but that's also why we're also seeing those increased wind speeds. Now, moving into Friday is going to be that big drop in temperature, mid-70s. So, again, with the smoke moving in, this is what we're looking at with those winds, the smoke pushing in from far northern California where there's fires burning right around here. We are looking at some of that smoke forecast to push into the Sacramento Valley spots. This is primarily going to be the biggest hit for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Very hazy skies, and the haze will continue into Thursday and Friday until we get that big push from those winds just offshore, onshore, pushing most of that haze and smoke out of the area, and we should start getting some more clear skies as well as those much cooler temperatures into Labor Day weekend. Now, health impacts from the wildfire smoke in the next 24 hours could be coughing, headaches, shortness of breath, 
eyes, nose, and throat irritation. If you are feeling any of these, you want to limit your exposure outside, especially those who are kind of sensitive to some of this air quality, people who have maybe asthma, respiratory illnesses, you might want to just keep it inside at least for the next 24 hours. Otherwise, should be okay, but you are going to notice it, especially in the sky and in the air. Hurricanes, let's talk hurricanes. We have another big issue for the U.S. right now. Aside from California dealing with fire threats and very hot conditions into Southern California, we are following now the potential approach into the next about six hours of Hurricane Idalia. That is starting to move into Florida as we speak. And this is as of about 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now we're watching the East Coast time, so 12.30 their time. You are seeing a very defined eye of the Hurricane Idalia is beginning to approach Big Bend. That's that area right here as you see into the Florida uh, Peninsula's kind of bend motion there just south of Panama City. This is where we're going to begin to see the strongest bands of rain. They're already moving onshore right now toward Tampa. We've already been seeing the strongest winds pushing on onshore in the last few hours. Now, this is at 110 mile per hour winds, one mile per hour shy of that category three. We should expect it really in the next 20 to 30 minutes. So as they start getting to about 1 a.m., they'll probably be seeing that category three storm system arriving in that hurricane. That makes it a major hurricane. That's going to be more impactful, obviously, than a category one and two, but it's also bringing in some stronger storm surge. These areas here in that red lining, that is that hurricane warning. They do expect to see some waves even topping as high as about 12 feet for some zones. And of course, we know areas like Fort Myers, a little further south there that got hit by Hurricane Ian is still recovering, and they're even dealing with their own wind and storm surge now. We are watching it as it starts moving into the Big Bend area in the overnight hours. And again, next six, max, maybe eight hours. We'll see it onshore. We do expect it to the very early morning hours around 4 or 5 a.m. as it begins to make its way on as landfall as a Category 3 hurricane. Let's track the system now. As you see, it's still a 2, but just one mile per hour off. You can kind of see that just there, 110, 111. Makes it a Category 3. As it begins to make its way up, we're seeing it make landfall. It's still showing a cat too, so maybe it's uh, models are predicting it may not intensify, but we're still keeping our eye on that. We do think and we still forecast a lot of computer models predicting it to at least make a three before potentially downgrading to a two at landfall, moving its way into Georgia and then eventually South Carolina in the next 12 hours. In the next 24 hours, beginning to move its way just offshore as a tropical storm and eventually depression into the weekend. Now, it will be encountering a lot of landfall, making the system slow down, lose its strength as well as its intensity, but still delivering a lot of moisture in terms of rain, storm surge, and very strong winds for those areas. So it's a very impactful system moving in in the next 6 to 12 hours. Now, across the nation, a lot of people dealing with wet weather as the low-pressure system is just to the north there. As you can see, it just passing Atlanta. That's actually going to help pull in that storm system and make it uh, kind of make its way in landfall a little sooner. Also providing it a little bit more of that moisture to deliver more rain for the areas. Areas here, as you can just tell, tell in the Gulf, they're dealing with their own heat. But also areas into Southern California have been dealing with excessive heat and a heat advisory in effect. Now into Northern California, that's where we're dealing with that fire weather concern ourselves. Further north in Oregon, air quality alerts. The air quality because Areas of Northern California and Oregon are dealing with their own fires burning. Now we're going to see the effects of that smoke moving down into the valley spots, into Sacramento and most of Northern California valley spots as we get into the next 24 hours. Taking a look into temperatures, mid to upper 90s and triple digits in Ione as we move into Wednesday. Again, the hottest day of the week as we will be pushing 100 degree temperatures for a lot of valley spots. Bay Area upper 70s and mid 80s from San Francisco to Oakland. Again, 102 Vacaville. Rio Vista, Vacaville, and Fairfield in that area of big concern here for fire weather. And then 100-degree temperatures up and down the valley, maybe pushing about 99 at Sacramento Executive Airport. As we look at the 10-day forecast, a major drop, as much as about 20 degrees or so as we move from Wednesday to Friday, even further than that, 21, 22 degrees. And then finally, moving into your Labor Day, Sunday into Monday, we're looking at temperatures mid to upper 80s, a very cool Labor Day weekend and continuing to see cooler temperatures as we move toward the next week.